you to the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Warm welcome to your church this morning, which is completely the wrong way round. You should be welcoming me, as I already have done. Um, my name is Christopher Salter. I'm a retired priest, but also a retired hospital chaplain uh, living in Alton. And Heather has asked to come for this service, and it's a pleasure and a privilege to be here with you. Shall we join together in our first hymn, number 702. <laughs> 702, yes. Um, yes, I never know when, whether you go across or whether you go down. <laughs> it was easier if you had a, a D. Uh -oh. Get more like that, then you know which way you're going. Number 702. <laughs>
Forsaking what lies behind and reaching out to that which is before, we may run the way of your commandments and win the crown of everlasting joy. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the first reading. says the Lord, when I will sow the house of Israel and the house of Judah with the seed of humans and the seed of animals. And just as I have watched over them pluck up and break down to overthrow, destroy and bring evil, so I will watch over them to build and to plant, said the Lord. In those days they shall no longer say, the parents have eaten sour grapes, and the children's teeth are set on edge. But all shall die for their own sins. The teeth of everyone who eats sour grapes shall be set on edge. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, a covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, said the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another, or say to each other, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity, and remember their sin no more. This is the word of the Lord. Seventeen.
gospel according to St. Luke, beginning at the first verse. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus told his disciples a parable about their need to pray always and not to lose heart. He said, In a certain city there was a judge who neither feared God nor had respect for people. In that city there was a widow who kept coming to him and saying, Grant me justice against my opponent. For a while he refused, but later he said to himself, Though I have no fear of God and no respect for anyone, yet because this widow keeps bothering me, I will grant her justice, so that she may not wear me out by continually coming. And the Lord said, Listen to what the unjust judge says. And will not God grant justice to his chosen ones, who cry to him day and night? Will he delay long in helping them? I tell you, he will quickly grant justice to them. And yet, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on earth? This is the Gospel of the Lord. In one word, how would you describe national life now? <laughs> if you wipe that to include international affairs, you might say unpredictable, or volatile, or muddled, or uncertain, or words much stronger and ruder than that. For us, in the last few years, there's been quite a lot of change. Uh, the most unusual one, of course, was COVID, something we haven't experienced in our lifetime. The Bible can speak to us because its writings are so often about people under strain or in people with their backs to the wall. We had a reading from Jeremiah. That's written to the people of Israel, and they have just been invaded, this time by the Babylonians. Israel was in a, a difficult geographical position, where its fertile land was much wanted by surrounding, surrounding nations and surrounding empires. So they'd been invaded yet again. The temple had been destroyed. The temple was the centre of their worship and the, worship and the centre of their civil life as well. A place of worship touches people very deeply. Remember or recall the uh, Discussions that take place when anything is um, altered or changed in one of our churches. How much more is there a touch of people's hearts when the temple is destroyed completely? The leaders of Israel and many others were deported to Babylon. Their whole life was turned upside down, and those left were left to scratch a living. 
this time, 2022, we can perhaps have a better feel for what some of that can feel like as we watch the events in and around Ukraine. The old order has disintegrated. That's happened and there's no going back. Psalm 137 is heartfelt. By the waters of Babylon, we sat down and wept. Upon the windows we hung our harps, for there our captors demanded of our songs, saying, Sing us one of the songs of Zion. So, what did Jeremiah say to them and to us in our Old Testament meeting? He was a he was a canny man, was Jeremiah. He spoke a lot of sense wrapped up um, in his prophecies. A prophet, as I'm sure you've been told dozens of times, is not so much a uh, foreseer of the future, but somebody who comments on current events. So what did Jeremiah say to them and to us? It will come about that as I've watched over them to pluck up, to break down, to overthrow, to destroy, and to bring disaster. So I will watch over them to build and to plant, declares the Lord. I will sow Israel and Judah with the seed of humans and the seed of animals. That's a very, that's a very profound statement which touches Wharton touches um, the question of why do bad things happen? And by and large, there's not an answer to that. And Jeremiah just, I will just touch on it because it's a very big subject. He says, as I have watched over them, to pluck up, to bring down, to overthrow, and so on. He's saying that he is there even in the midst of disaster. It doesn't explain it. The Bible doesn't explain it. And we can't explain it. Except obvious things like um, invasions or whatever. But things will change, declares the Lord through Jeremiah. They'll be rebuilding. It's not just easy optimism, don't worry, it'll be all right. Because you know perfectly well that that's little comfort and always unconvincing. Jeremiah goes on. The days are coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with you. Not like the previous one which people broke. I will put my law within them. And on their heart I will write it. And I will be their God. And they shall be my people. This is actually the whole story of scripture and human life in two short paragraphs. Disaster and renewal. The end of things as we know them. And a new life. Indeed the whole of the biblical narrative from Genesis to Revelation says that. We might think of, well, the very beginning of Genesis, the Garden of Eden, Eden. When things go wrong with Adam and Eve, and they are cast out, uh, and that obviously is pretty disastrous. But they pick themselves up, and in some way, with God's help, they go forward. We can think of the story of the flood. The earth was destroyed, or the known earth was destroyed by rain, flood, catastrophe. And yet, there was Noah with his ark of people and beings and seeds. Just a final example, you can think of the people of Israel, slaves in Egypt, then brought out of slavery and after many difficulties finding themselves in their own land. And that was certainly not a quick fix. They were 40 years in the wilderness. That's the story of life. 
life for communities, nations, and also for ourselves from time to time. We'll have recollections of when things have gone wrong, and we have some closer sense of God. Jeremiah says, the new covenant has been written in their hearts. Each person was to sense this. We use the word covenant, the old covenant, the old testament, the new covenant, the new testament. It's a word which, the way it's a bit difficult, do you remember that before we had direct debits? No. Yes. Before we had direct debits, we used to make standing orders sometimes. We'd make a covenant that tax could be reclaimed on that. It's now much easier. We do it with the click of a couple of buttons. But that was a legal statement. And this is taking the image of a legal agreement to represent the relationship between God and humankind. It's as if nothing's actually been signed, of course. The old covenant, which the people of Israel, according to Jeremiah, had broken, was in a way fairly prescriptive with the Ten Commandments and so on. Any group has rules like this. They can't be done without. Thou shalt not steal, lie, disrespect others, and so on. But the second that he speaks of is the new covenant. And that's a covenant that will be written in the heart, that is written in the inner self, the soul, our, our, our deepest, truest selves. That is the new covenant. And that new covenant is not to be a load or a burden, it's a gift, an easy yoke and a light burden, as Matthew writes in that song and chorus from the Messiah. It's the new life that is spoken of in the Old Testament and in the New, in the Gospels and in Paul's letters. The new life in Christ through grace. But Israel and we are called to make a response. Life is that. God's creation, God's offer, and our response. Our response is to prayer and worship, so that we will all know God, from the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord. <coughs> and I want to offer you, just briefly, a way of personal prayer that many may find helpful, which helps to write our understanding of God, our hearts. It's called the exam. It comes from Jesuit spirituality. It's really quite simple. Not easy, but simple. In our time of prayer, we reflect on a period of, of time, a day, a week, a month, an hour. We ask to recognize what has given us life or faith or hope in that time can be as simple as noticing what we are grateful for. And we give thanks for those events, or people, or words, or actions. And the next step is to notice what has given us the opposite. What has drained us of life, or turned us away from faith or hope, or made us despair, what has perturbed or annoyed us. And we pray about that and ask for understanding or acceptance for what has gone before. The example, one of the ways of opening our hearts to the grace and love of God, which is so freely offered to us. One of the ways in which God's nature and covenant can be written on our hearts. We don't know what the future will bring, we know what we would like it to be, but that's a different thing. But our calling is to seek a trusting faith 
that the words of Jeremiah will be fulfilled. I will put my law within you and write it on your hearts. I will put aside what has gone wrong and remember that no more. In God's world, the future is always more than the past. And we pray for that insight to be written in our hearts. Join together in our crew, page 7. We believe in God, God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. In the power of the Spirit, and in union with Christ, let us pray to the Father. to listen to our prayers for peace and hope in our divided world. Our belief in our Christianity gives us courage and strength through God's presence with us to seek to pray for his continuing unwavering support to each of us at this time of crisis for our country and the world. In particular, we ask Lord for your guidance to our Prime Minister, and the government to resolve quickly the injustices that have impacted on the lives of those who are dependent on our help in this time of trouble here, here at home. We gather together to thank you Lord for Reverend Christopher Slater who is with us today as our minister in charge whilst our rector is attending the marriage of her daughter Claire this weekend. We wish her family happiness on this occasion and for the future. Also thank God for walking beside our clergy and church wardens who keep our community together by initiating many activities to, to support us in the care for children, older people, young people, and those who are alone and vulnerable and in need of our help. We pray for people across the world of all different faiths who are suffering death, destruction and injury through no fault of their own. We pray for the people of Ukraine and in the past two days of the people who are trapped underground in Turkey we pray for their lives and for their relatives who are suffering anxiety. So Lord, we ask for you to support them and pray that governments will respond to their needs with care and compassion. We pray for people who are ill and suffering, for the staff of the NHS whose task it is to care for patients and relieve suffering that the NHS will receive the resources necessary to help all health professionals to get the care for which they were trained. We remember those who have died recently 
and their bereaved relatives. May they receive the healing power that God can give us, and we name those who are now at rest. Very God. And lastly, a prayer for us. Grant, Lord, that we may walk in your presence with your light ever before us, with your love in our hearts, your trust in our minds, your strength in our wills, that when we finally stand before you, it may be with the assurance of your welcome and the joy of our homecoming. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Jesus came and stood among his disciples and said, My peace I give you, my peace I leave with you. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you.
In the fullness of time you made us in your image, the crown of all creation. You give us breath and speech, that with angels and archangels, and all the powers of heaven, we may find a voice to sing your praise. Taking bread, he gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Christ is the bread of life. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, Lord Jesus, until you come in glory. Father, we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross. We remember his dying and rising in glory, and we rejoice that he intercedes for us at your right hand. Pour out your Holy Spirit as we bring before you these gifts of your creation. May they be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. As we eat and drink these holy things in your presence, form us in the likeness of Christ and build us into a living temple to your glory. Remember, Lord, your church in every land. Reveal her unity, guard her faith, and preserve her in peace. Bring us at the last of all the saints to the vision of that eternal splendor for which you have created us. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, by whom, and with whom, and in whom, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. Bless me.
we break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith and thanksgiving.
and thank you, O Christ, for this sacred feast, for here we receive you. Here the memory of your passion is renewed, here our minds are filled with grace, and here a pledge of future glory is given, when we shall feast at that table where you reign with all your saints forever.
bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look kindly on you and give you peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Amen.